So Apple has kicked off 2023 with a surprise by bringing the M2 chip to both the MacBook Pro lineup and the Mac Mini. I'm Mkwan here on Mkwan Reviews and this is an early hands-on review with the M2 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro. I've been using this for the last couple of days and in this video, I wanna help you understand whether or not this is the right machine for you. Now, an important context to this video, most of us will use our machines in different ways to one another. But for me, over the last year, I've been using the M1 Pro 16-inch MacBook Pro. So it's gonna be very interesting to talk about how it feels now using a slightly smaller device, but also whether or not that M2 Pro is really worth that much more of an upgrade. I use my devices, my Pro machines, predominantly for a lot of graphic video work, multiple streams of 4K, so I'm gonna be talking to you about that in the context of the rest of this video. If you were hoping for drastically new hardware refresh, that's not gonna happen with the new M2 Pro MacBook Pros because Apple is sticking to the same style and design they did a year and a half ago with that major refresh. Now, there are a few small changes internally. You've got Bluetooth 5.3, you've got Wi-Fi 6.E, there is an update to the HDMI, so it's 2.1 now. That means better support for external displays, 4K and 8K. And that is about it. I would have really liked to see an update to the front-facing camera so that we could incorporate and use Face ID, but it doesn't seem like that's been bought this time around. Really, the major upgrade is in the Apple Silicon that powers it. So this year, on the 14 and 16 inch, you can go with the M2 Pro or the M2 Max. On my particular model, I have the M2 Pro with the 12 core CPU, the 19 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and two terabytes worth of space. All right, so when it comes to everyday use and workflow, I'm gonna to talk to you about that in a moment, but let's crunch in some numbers because those benchmarks are important. I ran through the normal range of benchmarks, things like Geekbench, Cinebench, and a few others. And guess what? Unsurprisingly, the M2 Pro performs better than last year's M1 Pro, but we would expect that with all those extra cores. And really, how much better does it perform? Well, something like a multi-core rating on the Geekbench was about 25% an improvement from the M2 Pro versus last year's M1 Pro. When it comes to graphics like Cinebench, you'll notice about 19% difference or an improvement from the M2 Pro versus last year's M1 Pro. Even disk speed was very, very similar, although there was a slight improvement in write speed for the M2 Pro. But all in all, as we would expect, the M2 Pro does perform better when it comes to numbers over the M1 Pro. But does that translate into real world noticeable difference of let's say an average of 20%. Will you notice that difference if you were to use them side by side? And this is where it gets interesting. You see last year, there was a big jump between the Intel Max and the M1 Pro Max. There was a noticeable difference in terms of improvements and optimizations, everything from overall performance, but also when it came to battery life. Whereas this year, the improvement between the M1 Pro and the M2 Pro isn't that big a jump. Uh, noticeable day to day. Now, what I will say, another factor to consider is also third-party applications because third-party app optimization has improved now with Apple Silicon so much so that you're getting better performance with those third-party applications in Apple Silicon than you would do with, you know, Windows PCs and Intel machines. So that's certainly something to also consider. All right, to demonstrate what I was talking about earlier on, both of these, the M1 Pro 16-inch MacBook Pro and the M2 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro are rendering a 4K file. You would assume the M2 Pro to be around about 20% faster or quicker in finishing that rendering, but actually it wasn't. The difference between the two of them, and bear in mind they're exactly the same files, exactly the same footage 4K, um, was only 18 seconds. That was the difference between the M2 Pro finishing 18 seconds faster than last year's M1 Pro. 
Okay, so for the most part, the fans have been pretty good on the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M2 Pro, but I am running Cinebench, which is quite taxing on the system. And I've noticed, I don't know if you can tell, listen to this. Yeah, the fans definitely are louder on the 14 inch than on the 16 inch. It's barely audible on the 16 inch. But in terms of heat and throttling, well, let's just measure up now in the middle over there. There we go. It's ooh, 108.1 Fahrenheit versus, which is still quite hot, 103.4 Fahrenheit. Something else I want to share with you. I didn't realize until I started using this what a difference it makes between the 16 and 14 inch. I know it might seem silly to some of you, but really the 14 inch is way more portable, much more fun to kind of use and just throw into your bag and carry around. It's a powerhouse in this 14 inch format. Again, if you're gonna opt with the M2 Pro version, I think if you're gonna opt to the M2 Max, then there are gonna be issues around throttling, there are gonna be issues around battery life because those extra cores do drain more battery as we found uh, last year with the difference between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max on a 14 inch specifically. But just the portability element, if you're gonna stick with the M2 Pro, the 14 inch is way, way lighter. And look, there are advantages of the 16 inch. I did enjoy the better battery life with the 16 inch. I do enjoy the larger display, especially when you're video editing, but yeah, man, I mean, like, this is way, way more portable. But what I will say is, on this slightly smaller size, I found that the battery did drain a lot faster when I was doing those graphic intensive activities. Like, for example, rendering that 10 minute 4K video. Um, I was losing about 6 to 7% battery on the M1 Pro, 16 inch MacBook Pro, whereas on this, it was more like 11 to 12% battery after that 10 minute render. Again, something worth considering. What is good though is, as far as the specs are concerned, the battery life on the M2 Pro. MacBook Pros should be slightly better than last year's M1 Pro, especially for the 14 inch format. Uh, again, I need longer testing time to actually see if that is the case. I mean, I think the battery overall with macOS and the Apple Silicon on either the 14 or the 16 inch MacBook Pros is great to begin with, but something worth considering. All right, that's a wrap. So in essence, if you've got an M1 Pro or an M1 Max MacBook Pro, stop. You don't need to upgrade. But if you've been sitting on the fence for a while or you have an older Intel Mac, this is the best time to pick one of these machines up. Not only has Apple improved on their Apple Silicon, so you're getting the latest with that, but if you require up to 96 gigabytes worth of unified RAM, then you can go with that. Obviously, it's gonna cost you, but you can go with that option with the M2 Max variant. I still think for most people, the M2 Pro is a solid in-between uh, option when it comes to specs. Consider getting a 32 gigabyte if you wanna keep this for a couple of years, and obviously consider uh, a terabyte or two terabytes if you're planning on keeping this for longer than a couple of years. It's a solid, solid machine, well worth it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this, hit subscribe, hit like, and I'll see you here for another video.